Welcome to Koinonia. Here at Great Bridge United Methodist Church, we welcome online and in-person community, lively spiritual conversation, and personal study and reflection so that we may give our hearts and our lives to God in order to transform the world and see to it that no one misses out on the grace of God. We know that the Word of God draws us closer to one another and that the study of God's Word is essential to our Christian walk. So let's open up our browsers and our Bibles and receive God's Word to us today. of our sermon series called Made for Mondays, and I'm looking at Psalm 127, verses 1 through 5, that come to us from the message version this morning. If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchmen might as well nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know that he enjoys giving rest to those he loves? Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb of his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. My friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, This is a pulpit, and uh, I, I haven't I haven't seen a pulpit in a, a long time. In fact, I I haven't been behind a, a pulpit in a very very long time. In fact, as probably you know, I, I've been a listener like you all over the past few weeks. And let me tell you, it is kind of fun. It, it, it is kind of fun. You get, to, you get to relax a little bit. I mean, aren't those nice cushions? I, I like those. And those chairs are pretty nice as well, right? No relaxing right now for me, right? I'm standing on my feet. You all get to relax. And, and I kind of needed that this, uh, over those last four weeks because, well, my summer was busier than normal. Busy, busy summer. So I love just sitting where you all are and, and taking in the, the rich theological insights from Pastor Devin and the energy from an enthusiastic lover and follower of Jesus and Jackson, who's going to be a father in a few weeks, right? Yeah, that's a wound right there, right? But one of the things that I noticed when I was doing what you all are, are doing right now is that sometimes my, my listening wasn't as sharp as it was, say, in the, the beginning of the sermon. I, I had moments as the sermon kind of went on a little bit where my, my mind drifted. Is that true for anyone else in here? Right? Isn't that great how I just got you all to confess that you daydream during the sermon? And if you think that's the point I'm trying to make, let me tell you, no, 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 no. I, I'm just, I'm being honest and I'm so glad you're also being honest because listening, listening is hard sometimes. We can be plugged in, we can be in tune, we be can be connected, and then our minds start leaving the present and then we go off in some other direction or thought. 
even during the sermon. Did my, did my phone just vibrate? Is someone trying to, to call me or to text me? I hope we get to that restaurant before that other church does. <laughs> I'm really hungry this morning. I have to water the plants when I get home because everything is so dry. I wonder, I wonder when it's going to rain again. That weather channel said it was supposed to rain 37%, 40%, 80%, and it still hasn't rained. I have to pay the bills. Bills, I got bills that are due. In fact, I got a big bill that's due on Wednesday, so I better get that check out on the mail. I hope I remember when I get home church to do the bills. And now that school's back in session, uh, these might be some of our additional thoughts. I have homework to do, or I have to check on the kids' homework assignments that may be due, or I have to go grocery shopping and get some things for their school lunches. And then you find yourself making a a mental store list. How many of you have made a, a mental store list? to go grocery shopping after church, right? And then suddenly and without warning, the preacher says, amen, amen. And it must have been a good sermon because the folks that are sitting in front of you and behind you and around you, they're still there. They haven't left, right? No one left during the sermon. Must be a good sermon. And so you have your your pastoral benediction all planned out. What are you gonna say when you go out the back? You say, Good sermon today, pastor. But was it really good? What makes a good sermon? A conversion? A rededication? A renewed commitment? A realization? Perhaps way back before we were caught up in a global pandemic, stirred and motivated by positional and dividing politics, worried about global and domestic terrorism and the innocent lives lost in an instant, a good Sunday sermon could be all of these. Conversion, rededication, renewed commitment, a realization. But now, with our shorter attention spans and our endless to-dos and the constant bombardment of technology, I've decided, or more to the truth, I felt led by the Spirit to focus on just one of these. Just one. Realization. I looked at this biblical text all week and the possibilities for sermonizing were were endless and the commentaries that I was looking at were pretty pointed, telling and directing me what I should be doing. The normal thing would be to take all those endless possibilities, go to the commentaries, figure out what needs to be said, put it on paper and preach it. But as I've told you, I haven't preached in a while. Since been such a long time, I decided I was just going to sit with the text. Just sit with the text. Read it over and over and over again. Let it say something to me, not found in a commentary. What was God saying? What did I need to hear? If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchmen might as well nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and to work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest even to those or rest to those he loves? Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb of his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. 
your enemies. Don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. And as I was reading this over and over again, I felt as if I I was sitting in the pew like you're doing right now with a mind running full of ideas after ideas after ideas. Yes, God builds a better house than a human builder. Can I get an amen? Amen. And yes, God is who I need to watch over my life. Can I get another amen? Amen. Yes, I know that I can work every single hour of the day and even into the night and yet still be worried over what yet needs to be done. Can I get another amen? Amen, right? And yes, yes, I know that God loves me and has asked of me to take a day of rest, Sabbath day, not just an hour or two at church, mind you, a day to rest in God's love and grace and try to fully understand that and comprehend, let that wash over me. I get all of this and I'm willing to bet so do you. And as we think about all this, the the big theological word that is in place is the word called sovereignty, which we've heard a lot over the, the past few days. Sovereignty, which means supreme and powerful authority. And when we look at it from a human perspective, when sovereignty is lived out well, such as was the case with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, we take note, and we even pay our respect. Queen Elizabeth, at her coronation, she told the the people of the Commonwealth, she said something that really perked their ears. She said, therefore, I am sure that this, my coronation, is not the symbol of a power and a splendor that are gone, but a declaration of our hopes for the future. And for the years that I may, by God's grace and mercy, be given to reign and serve you as your queen. That's from a human. You you see the same, our God is sovereign too. Rich in mercy, grace, and love. And our God cares about our future too. Our future. Believing to be that to be true, that's when the light bulb came on and and shed its light on the spirit of this this text where I said all these ideas and was trying to figure out what was this all about children? Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb of his generous legacy? What at first seemed a, a random thought makes sense to me now. The word from God is trying to get us to realize the importance of the future. The future that we are forging for our children and for our children's children's sake. Those who come after us. Our children, you saw just right down here, who will carry on the faith after us. So I started to think, what are we leaving for them. People who are sometimes fixed on dates, December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, January 6th, 2021. People who also seem to be stuck on letting it just be the time about God is just on Sundays. But friends, there's more to us, more to who we are, because after December 7th came December 8th, and then after came August 14th, 1945, when Imperial Japan surrendered and the war was over. And after September 11th came September 12th. And then after that came September 11th of 2011 when the World Trade Center Memorial was dedicated and open to the public so that the world as well as the United States of America could grieve 
and to heal. And after January 6th came January 7th, and one day, hopefully soon, the best of who we are as a nation will be revealed once again. And after Sunday comes Monday and Tuesday and the future. This church has a future. Let no one talk you out of it. No preacher, no denominational leader, no website, Facebook post, blog, or tweet. Never give up on working, on revealing God's future reality for our children and our children that we have been blessed with in this community. Reveal that there is a glorious future for all of God's children. Because you, Great Bridge United Methodist Church, were made for Mondays and beyond. Because your sovereign God has given his child for your future. His son came to take away the sinful before life that we all have and knowing the desired future and plan of Almighty God, God's son Jesus died and rose again for your after life. A life of rest because you are loved. A life of peace because God watches over you always. A life without end because you were made to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This isn't pulpit. And this really isn't a sermon. May may you realize that you all are the sermon. You are the best sermon. You are that good sermon that needs to be preached each and every day. And may you do so in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.